Users hate to wait, and we just need to make them wait for a while and hope that they're patient. One way that we can help them be a little bit patient is to use a progress view. The UI progress view is simply a progress bar, and the nice thing about it for users is it gives a definite end. They assume that when the progress bar reaches the end, that the process will end and their app will be back. That's not, unfortunately not always the case, but we're going to try to make it so. So I've started this app and I've created a start button and a stop button. And you can see I've also added some constraints so that it positions properly. And here's my progress bar. It's obviously a very thin little control. And there are a couple of properties that we can set. There's a progress property and the progress bar runs from zero to one and we can use whatever increment we want. And you can see as I increase the increment, I get a blue bar going across. And I'd like to start it at zero, so I'll set it at zero. We also have tint properties. And we can choose whatever colors we want. We'll go for green for being done. And then the rest of the track, hmm, let's see. Well, maybe, uh, hopefully that's white. Okay, that was definitely white and that doesn't work. We'll stay with the light gray. These are the basic properties that we're going to be using with a progress bar. It's a pretty simple control. So I have set up some connections. I've already done some code because you really don't want to watch me type. So here's our view controller. And I've created an outlet for our progress view called progress. I've also created an NS timer and named it timer. And I've created a couple actions for the buttons, button start touched and button stop touched. When button start touched runs, I set my progress, progress property equal to zero. So that resets the progress bar back to zero. And then I'm going to create my timer. And I create that using NS timer, scheduled timer with time interval. And I'm using an interval of 0.5 seconds. The target is self indicating that the function that we're going to call is on this view controller. And the selector is the function we're going to call. It's called update progress. We don't have any particular user info we're going to be passing. And this time we will repeat. In other words, it will go every 0.5 seconds as opposed to just timing going to 0.5 seconds and stopping. So let's take a look at our update progress. We're going to increase the progress bars progress property by 0.1. And if the progress is equal to one, we've hit the end of the progress bar and we're going to stop our timer by calling timer invalidate. On the button stop touched, we'll invalidate our timer and reset our progress to zero. So let's see how all this works. We've got our buttons and we've got our progress view and it's all gray at this point because we have zero progress. And when I tap on start, you can see the progress goes across in the green color that I specified. And it stopped at this point because it hit the end. So let's hit that start again and we'll stop it halfway through and it does indeed stop and go to zero. So what we've taken a look at here is how to use the progress view and also a little bit about how to use an NS timer. 
Another possible scenario for the progress view, in fact, a likely scenario, is if you're downloading a file and you happen to know the file length. So you can set the progress as the progress of the file comes through. For instance, Amazon Web Services provides progress updates when you're downloading files. So you can use a progress view in that case to let the user know we're downloading the file, but also it's going to be done in five minutes, two minutes, whatever. We're 50% done, we're 75% done. So that gives the user the feeling that at least something good is happening. In our next lesson, we're going to also use another activity view. However, this one's not as warm fuzz mistake. However, this one doesn't create as quite a warm and fuzzy <laughs> darn mistake. However, this one doesn't create quite as warm and fuzzy a feeling for the user because there's no end in sight. So we'll do that in our next lesson.